the biblical truth of our hands. Today, angels from the realms of glory. And we'll get into a little history of this. Uh, words were by James McGovern, uh, stanzas one through four. The Christmas box, stanza five. And the music by Henry T. Smart. Montgomery, he was concerned with humanitarian causes, such as abolish of slavery, and exploitation of children, chimney sweeps. After retiring from the newspaper editorship, Montgomery's only other long poem is The Pelican Island, 1828. Montgomery found a job in 1792 as a radical weekly newspaper than Sheffield Register. He assumed the leadership of the newspaper when the previous editor, due to his politics, had to flee the country for fear of persecution. Montgomery then changed the name of the paper to the Sheffield Iris and served for, the, and served for 31 years as the editor. The themes of justice and mercy as well as the image of broken chains are also appropriate in the context of the poet's life. His newspaper denounced the society evils, or excuse me, the social evils of his day, especially the slave trade. Montgomery even was jailed for his radical view. The Christmas Box, 1825. The first complete book published by the Religious Tract Society, decades before the Victorian or post-Victorian flood of carol books, was in seasonal assortment including three new carols. It has bestowed to us four enduring lines, usually comprising as here a concluding stanza for number 350. Whether or not the conscious rivalry, another anonymous volume called the Good Christian Box, used and found valuable in 1928 by P. Drammer and others, was published in 1846 to 47. A words only collection of some genuine folk carols. By way of contact, cr contrast, a Christmas box, probably late 19th century, is an attack on Christmas for his paganism by S. Colson's of Rehoboth Chapel and particular Calvinistic Baptist Chapel in Shadwell, East London. The original final stanza is usually omitted from hymnals. Sinners wrung with true repentance, doomed for guilt to endless pain. Justice now revokes your sentence. Mercy calls you. Break your chains. While such language seems harsh to martyred ears, and indeed seems to end a Christian hymn on a bit of a downer. Uh, so, pick up with the Bible and what we have here we got to do the Bible I mean it's the biblical truth of our hymns and I don't care if people like it I don't care if it's well known if it's against the Bible it's against the Bible as all of the studies have been angels from the realm of glory that's true wing your flight over all the earth now that's not saying angels have wings in the book of Revelation, you see a couple times that angels flew through the heaven. And just because you fly doesn't mean you have wings. I mean, you can say, well, in a food fight in a cafeteria, the food just flew all over the place. Well, that doesn't mean that the meatloaf or the macaroni and cheese grew wings. So there is no subject of wings. It's an expression about flying. Wings your flight over all the earth. Ye who sang creation story. That's interesting because Job 38, 7. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. We're going to see Bible, Scripture in this hymn. And there's some errors. Hymns are not uh, inspired by God. They're not inerrant like the Bible, the King James Bible. There is error in hymns. There is not error in the King James Bible. 
So you were saying previous ones, well, style, you, know, you go after, you know, the angels don't sing. They sing in the creation. When they had Lucifer as their song leader. Since Lucifer fell, you don't see singing in heaven. Singing doesn't return into heaven until they sing the song of the Lamb and the song of uh, Moses. I even believe, let's see, let's check this one out. Well, let's check it out. Revelation. Let's see what the cherubim were doing. Revelation chapter 4. Oh. Revelation 4. Revelation 4, 10. 4 and 24, uh, 9. When those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. No, that's not. Okay, verse 8. Revelation 4, 8. And the four beasts, each of them had six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not, hold, rest not day and night, saying, saying. So even right now, the four beasts are not singing. But the realm of the singing here is in creation before Lucifer fell. And come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn king, king of the Jews, true. Every wise man comes to Christ to worship him. Every foolish man avoids Jesus. Shepherds in the field abiding. True. Watching over their flock by night. True. God with us, Emmanuel, is now reciting. Yonder shines the infant capital L light. Now that does not mean like the Catholic and, and the, these... Uh, uh, nativity scene. The, the writer, Montgomery, is not saying Jesus Christ glue, that Jesus Christ walked on this earth 33 and a half years with his halo glowing. I mean, if he glue and had a halo about him, why did they reject him as the Messiah? Why did they reject him as God? I mean, the fact is, one time he says, listen, I and the Father are one. He said another time, John chapter 6, I and the Father and the Father and I, and they were going to stone him. Well, if he had this glow about him, they would look at him and say, yep, you're God, let's receive him. They didn't. Now the light this, this gentleman speaks about in this hymn is John chapter 1. The light that cometh into the world, that light is every man, John 3. And men disregard the light. Their deeds are wicked and evil. And they don't want to be reproved. Now verse 3. We got a little bit of trouble. <laughs> First time I ever said we got a little trouble with this one. Sages leave your contemplations. Brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations. Now that great desire of nations. When we run to Haggai. What's that? What's a Haggai? Many Christians don't even know what Haggai is. Haggai is found in your Bible, the Old Testament, a prophet. Haggai 2.7 I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. I barely, rarely ever heard this hymn sung in the church and it quotes from Haggai. That's interesting. The only real keen thing we're going to come up in a moment is this guy's involved with the newspaper, the media. But he has a carol with scripture, proper scripture. I put this one in, in our hymnals. And we're going to come to the, to the problem real soon. Seek the Great Desire, capital D. That's a lot better than a capital D in virgin to deify and godify godlessly Mary. Which you don't do, because Mary's not a god. She's a wonderful woman, but she's not a god. Here, the desire, the capital D of nation is not Republican, it's not Democrat. It's Jesus Christ of nations. 
you have seen uh, this is the only trouble I have is NATO star but star rhymes with far found in this stanza three a lot of your problems with your hymns you're going to find is I need a word that rhymes with this word so I can have a rhyming poem now, the NATO star, and you're going to say, oh, don't go in the Bible. We have to go in the Bible. we got to go to Matthew. we got to look at Ma Matthew. Matthew chapter 2. You say, stop it. You're ruining it. I'm not ruining it. If I were to put this in a church hymnal, I would find something else that rhymed with with afar and change his natal star to something else. I would actually cross that out and find something better. Because let's look now, natal. I don't have it. Nato is reference to birth. I'm gonna bring it back to here. I thought I had it still. And we gotta look at words. That's the problem. Words. Words are a problem. Of or relating to a person's birth. Presiding over or affecting a person at birth. So, now, we got a problem. NATO star. The star that represents the birth of Jesus. Matthew chapter 2. Now, Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that's born of the king of the Jews? Okay, we're talking about birth. It's easy to see All right, where we would fall into lines here. It's, he was born. He was the king that's born. Notice the king of the Jews, and we've already seen the line. Born, where is it? King. Christ, the newborn king. I would assume, I, I don't know anything about Montgomery, but I assume he was taking that out of Matthew too. But he's going to make a, a error out of Matthew too. Saying, where is he that's born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. So we got birth, we got born, we got a star. We got a king. Now the story is that they come to Herod. Hey, where is this king? Herod gets upset. Go find this king for me. I want to go worship him. And they go out. And they find Jesus. Verse 11. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child. No more an infant. He's grown. He's not in that manger no more. He's in a house. He's grown up. The wise men do not show up at the birth of Jesus Christ. Only the shepherds. Luke 1. Matthew 2 says that when the Magi come, he is young, he's in a house, and we don't know how many there are. I saw the young child with Mary his mother, so it's got to be Jesus, and fell down and worshipped him, not Mary. When they had opened up their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed unto their own country another way. And verse 14, when he arose, he took the young child. Verse 16, Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and all the coasts thereof from two years old and under. So we've got a margin of an age of Jesus no more than two years old. And he's surely not an infant because he's a young child. So when we go about, we have seen his natal star. 
That's wrong. That is wrong. There is no baby Jesus. There's no baby Jesus star. The star is a star of young child. So I would say I have seen his young star or young child star to be biblically correct. Saints, that's me, before the altar bending, I've been at altars bending, I pray on my knees, watching long in hope and fear, suddenly by the Lord, descending in his temple shall appear. 13 years old, Jesus Christ is going to show up at the temple. 30 years old, He's going to show up at the temple. Anna is at the temple when Jesus shows up, eight days old. And she is at the temple praying and fasting. Simeon is at the temple when Jesus is eight days old, looking for the Messiah. Been promised by the, by the Holy Spirit that he will not see death until he sees the Lord's Christ. And there he is. Shows up in the temple. Eight days old, Mary and Joseph bring Jesus to be circumcised, to be named at Jerusalem in the temple. A lot of scripture in here. Oh, you got one problem, that NATO star. I got a NATO. That's the only problem I got so far. You got to put a young child. Though an infant, now we view him. He was. Not at. We're looking at Christ's birth. That NATO star ruins everything. But as far as the infant, now we view him, capital H. He shall fill his father's throne. He's seated at the right hand of the Father today. So we've gone from infancy. We're going to the resurrected Christ. This him, Carol, puts not Jesus Christ as that baby. It has put Jesus Christ as a man who has suffered and died and buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And Acts chapter 1 is ascended to the Father's right hand. Gather all nations to him. Millennium. Birth. Ascension. Millennium. Second advent and millennium. Every knee shall then bow down. That would probably take you to the great white throne judgment, definitely. Infant, ascension, second advent, millennium, and the great white throne judgment. For those that reject it. Common worship. That's an invitation. If you didn't get it the first time, come and worship. I have planted Apollo's water. Worship Christ. No one but Christ. There's only one Christ, capital C. The newborn king, capital K. There's only one king that's been born in this world that will ever have been born, that ever is born, that will ever be born, that will be that capital K, that will be that capital C of Christ, that is of God, that will give you salvation. This is a hymn that I would put in the hymn, though. I just have problems with that natal star. It's not bad. I don't know how many words. I didn't count them. But all the words here, I, I got a problem with one word. That's not bad. Child star. Ye have seen his child star. That'd be good right there. And then you got a wonderful hymn. It proclaims the birth of Jesus. It proclaims the office of Jesus. It proclaims biblical truth about Jesus. It even takes you in a book of the Bible that many have never trod. Haggai. It's funny for some Christians. Let's say you got lost. Someone kidnapped you. Something happened to your body. You went missing. And the only thing they have that is your ability is they have Habakkuk of your Bible, Haggai of your Bible, 
Nahum of your Bible, Amos of your Bible, and my question, if they were having only those things of your entire life, and they need to find you, could they find your fingerprints, and could they find your DNA in those books that I mentioned? Now, maybe, listen, even I have a hard time finding Haggai and Habakkuk. But I've been in there. I've marked those passages. I've read those passages. Nine years, if not more. I've been through Haggai at least once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times, reading the Bible through through a year. Uh, as a family, we have been through Haggai once as a family. Been through Habakkuk once as a family. Once as reading, two for reading, three for reading, four yearly reading, five yearly reading. When was the last time in your church, your church, angels from the realms of glory, have you heard some? Oh, but you've heard, oh, little town of Bethlehem? You've probably heard, no well, no well. We wish there was no hell. You probably mean heard the, 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 the blasphemy song. My eyes have seen the coming of the saints and welfare system. Abolishing the government so we can have our free stuff. That's nothing about Jesus Christ. No truth, no. We've already done that. Go back in history. We've done that, 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 that republic song. Has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. But I have heard that hymn sung in churches and I've kept my mouth zip. I think I, I, I've sung this hymn. I don't know. I don't even know if I've sung it. I know I've heard it. Maybe it's over the loudspeakers at the grocery store at one time. One word. There's a problem, but yet there's biblical in. What was the name? The biblical truth of our hymns, and it's found here. With one error. But it's, the hymn book is not infallible. We have done how many hymns that are junk, shredder, shredded, and then throw it in the fireplace and let it not ever be found again. I don't say about this one. This is a hymn that can be sung all year round. And everybody probably think, oh, the biblical truth are hymns. He's going to slam down every hymn. He's going to nail them. He's going to blow them up. He's going to burn them. He's going to... No, not this one. You find me another word for NATO, child. I sing it. It's a good one. And it's kind of funny for a newspaper editor. Glory to God in the highest. 